All right, here we are. It's 302. Everybody that's dialed in, let's do this. And everybody that's not dialed in, you're catching the recording late. We're still doing this. So here we are, Pepper Jam Fam. This is colossal changes in digital marketing that you can use through Peak. So even before 2018, there are many, many changes. Today we're going to talk about the inherent meaning of those changes and how you can use them. So as we kick this off, uh, as we do the webinars, there we're using GoToWebinar, so there is a question box that you could use in the panel that's probably on the right of your screen. We will get to all of your questions at the end. I won't be talking the whole time. So hopefully we inspire some great questions, some great conversations. So if you have an idea, something you wanna add, that in question form, put it in that box. And my colleague, Sean here, who's fielding the webinar from an admin perspective, will queue it up and we'll answer it at the end. So please use that box. Let's do this. So you're probably wondering who's this caffeinated guy on the other end of the phone. My name is Steve Weber. I'm the SEO director here at Pepper Jam. And whether you're part of the Pepper Jam family and you're part of our network, you're using our agency services or both, we have experts across the digital marketing gamut. My expertise is in both analytics and technical SEO. I have the great privilege of hopefully all of the clients that I look after are on the, on the phone where I could say I have a great privilege of looking after your website. But if you do not fall in that category, and if I do not look after your website, contact me at this email because I'd like to at least give you any pointers that I can, and that's kind of the whole idea of this webinar. Hopefully, we talk about change and give you some low-hanging fruit ideas that you could take over the next few weeks and have an incredible peak. So let's do it. Let's kick it right into what I'm seeing. So the search landscape, the digital marketing landscape is changing. I feel like you guys know this, you see this, you're staring at your own analytics, trying to stack up against last year and it's, it's not apples to apples, things are changing. Here's what I see. Adobe and the Adobe Analytics platform has an incredible blog if you're not following it. It's cmo.com and in their blog you get insights into their data, and all of it is a content marketing play and that's free. So if there's one blog that I would tune you to is this particular one that came out September 8th. And in it, they say something that you probably already figured it's happening just based on staring at your own analytics, and it's this. Tablets and desktop devices are not winning the war for traffic. The graphic on the right comes to us from this Adobe blog where they show the data. Since 2015, smartphones, 18% up in the way of traffic. And when I see this, I am not surprised by that. Just in the way that I navigate the web, I'm using my phone more than I'm using my desktop, more than I'm using my tablet. And your audiences, chances are good that they're following that same pattern too. So change number one, Bigger screens are certainly not winning right now and probably not in the future, guys. Everyone's using their phone. So going off that in my domain, in SEO, Google search, they're trying to solve for that. And right now they're focused on mobile first indexing. So how Google is ranking your web pages, your landing pages, at the moment, they're ranking them based off factors of how your page renders as if you were looking on your computer. They're flipping that. They're doing all of their ranking algorithms, basing it against how your pages render on mobile devices. The thing about this is this is going to be an ongoing update. Hopefully that's launched 100% by 2018. What I could tell you is I'm already feeling the effects 
on sites that I work with that are not mobile friendly or responsive. So this change already is happening, but hasn't completely launched yet. So if you are not a mobile friendly responsive site, please put that on your calendar. I realize that's a heavy lift through peak, but at least get the conversations going, at least start working this into your plan. So all of these changes, everything I'm referencing later in our conversation, I'm going to tell you the meaning, give you a couple actionable steps as to what you could do to prep, get ready, or use this. But all of these gray half slide types, there's a URL that I include that you could jump out, learn more information. And on the very last slide, there's a link to download this entire deck. So Google search is focusing on mobile first, but Google Alphabet, as a parent company, their focus is even more specific on something higher than that, and it's artificial intelligence. So their CEO, Sundar Pichai, hopefully I said his name right, as a company, they're focused on artificial intelligence. So his role at Google was artificial intelligence and they promoted him to CEO. That alone is telling. But some neat things that are happening in the way of Google, in the way of artificial intelligence, we're not at self-aware machines, Terminator 2 just yet. We're not there, far from there, but where we are is machine learning. So computers are getting faster than ever before. And data, they're able to learn and sift through data to make decisions and make better user experiences. And Google is doing that at scale across the board. So on the slide, I wanna give you a couple examples that touch us in the advertising online industry. So we have Rank Brain for Google search, their algorithm, their algorithm that teases out their goal of delivering the best result for any given query. So historically, SEO has been about you know, 200 ranking factors. And if your landing page hit the mark for most of those, you would be that best result in that first position. But that's not the story anymore. The algorithm is dynamic. It changes based on what we search to truly aim and deliver the best result. So that's a, a complete industry changer for us here in SEO but that is the machine learning level that Google at a company is striving for. And that's only search. You guys know there, Google is involved in many other aspects. So another one that helps us all in digital marketing be better at our own jobs is if you have Google Analytics installed on your website, there's a neat feature you might not have even noticed that they added. So when you log into Google Analytics and you go to the main dashboard, and actually from most screens in Google Analytics, there's a little blue circle now for intelligence alerts. What's awesome about this is their machine learning technology, they're putting against your own data for free. So now they're giving you insights into, hey, webmaster, did you know your checkout pages there's one step in the funnel that's taking 25 seconds to load on Android devices. It's awesome. It alerts you of stuff like this when it finds anything that it believes you're going to need to know about. The way you could use this is it's going to pinpoint any blind spot that you previously would have had. So definitely check that out. That's machine learning with another tool in our arsenal that only makes us all stronger. Google's also using machine learning for really neat things. On Google phones, there's an app for Google Lens where your smartphone, you could just take it out, point it at a location, and somehow it's mapping the pixels to know exactly what you're looking at, and it's going to give you information about that. That alone is telling. If Google's using its machine learning to pair up its understanding of entities and text and things and websites with visuals, I think this is only scratching the surface of what the internet and digital marketing could become. So Google search focused on mobile, but Google as a company 
it's going AI first. So big things coming there. Next, Google also owns Chrome. And you might have seen this. Chrome is going to start displaying, actually we're already in October. So as of this month, the latest version of Chrome for anything that is not behind SSL, any web page that is not truly HTTPS, it's going to say and give the searcher a not secure warning anytime they go to type in a form. So this is most of your websites because you have search functions on your websites. You have contact us forms, you have things like that. And here's where it gets even more <laughs> broader of a topic you're gonna wanna cover. If the searcher is in incognito mode, so control shift N for private browsing in Chrome, everything's gonna say that it's not secure. So Chrome and Google, they're taking a stance, user experience stance behind security. So on the roadmap, HTTPS also. But Chrome isn't stopping there. Chrome is really upping its security ante and user experience ante with this other add-in too. So Google Chrome is going to have a built-in, it, you know, here it says it's an ad blocker, but it's really more of an ad filter. So a couple of slides ago, you heard me talk about Google going the machine learning way. Well, Chrome has all the data to machine learn against what is a poor ad experience. And coming out of this, they've built a filter that's just no longer gonna bug users with poor ad experiences. And they say this, that if your ads are not compliant with the better ad standards starting in early 2018, your ads are just gonna get hidden. Your videos aren't gonna play and users of Chrome aren't even gonna see them. So in a couple of slides, I'm gonna show you what you could do to take care of that, to check for it, and to make sure everything's underway. Another Google change, this one's big in my domain. So in terms of search marketing, over 40% of all buyer intent related searches, so if you were to go to Google with the intention of buying something, 40% they're saying start with a broad term. No surprise there, guys. Honestly, you need to be aware of what you want to buy before you know what you want to buy. So in this screenshot on the right, I'm using a site that we look after, Nature Made, so vitamins, multivitamins. If you search their best keyword, their brand, and this is only one example, this is on probably your brand too, if you check it, a new type of product listing ad gets displayed for broad searches, including most likely your brand name. These are called showcase shopping ads and Google is experimenting with them right now. But recently over the summer, they started to push this to production and make these available to all advertisers. So anybody who's doing Google Shopping has a data feed, you have the ability to build these ads too and display it for broad queries. The thing with this is look at that scroll line, look what's below the fold. You also have text ads and then my domain, the organic soldiers of the world, my brothers and sisters, our click-through rate, you are a couple of scrolls down. So we're gonna talk about what we could do on a couple of slides but the search landscape is clearly going more visual and there's some neat things we could do with that in mind. But that's not where it stops. It just does, it doesn't stop with product listing ads being visual. Google is also doing some really neat things inside of their image search. So there are a couple of features that I could catch you up about. They now, if you search and use Google images, they're bringing in things like videos. They're bringing in things like recipes. So it's more than just imagery. 
And what they're doing is they're tagging all of this type content to say, hey, you're looking because you want to surf that visual, but have you considered maybe you're interested in getting this recipe or this video? And you could tell that they're expanding on this because when you click into an image, there are two new sections too. There's style ideas and then there's similar items. So they're mapping up what visuals look like and trying to give you a whole visual search result page. It's neat. It's really, really neat. So let's talk about how do we use these things to our advantage? Well, we went over all of the things that I see to build this story. And the very first one was deliberate. The world is going mobile first. Mobile traffic is predominantly your audience at the moment. And if it isn't, you might be in a B2B realm or you might just have a strange case of your audience likes using a desktop. But for the majority of you, mobile visitors are the way forward. So we need fast, responsive experiences. And here's some tips to help you make that happen. So one of the things maybe you've heard about is Google Page Speed Insights. So it's a testing tool that you can plug and play any landing page and it'll give you some recommendations based on Google's criteria, one out of a hundred, to say you really focused on your user experience in the way of speed. The thing about that is there's also a module that you could install or your developer could install at the server level for two of the most popular server types. So you have Apache and Nginx. And this installed at the server level takes care of all of those compression, image compression, minification things that you've seen in PageSpeed Insights. And if you're not using these, if this is in your blind spot, I'd say if you take one thing away from this webinar, Take a screenshot right now and say, hey, developer, let's get on this. Let's use this. This is free. Tap into this. It's going to make your landing pages optimized for speed. And as your mobile audience, if they're not getting an experience that taps into this, chances are good. Your bounce rates are high and could be better. So one thing you could do quickly over peak, send this to your developer and make this one happen. So I put two links on this page. The first one here, developers.google speed page speed module, that's the one with this screenshot that's going to get you right to the package that your developer needs. And this second one, this test my site thinkwithgoogle.com, this is just a plug and play, drop your landing page in, it'll check it for speed. It's the new version of Google Page Speed Insight Test. But what I like about this is it goes out and tests your speed based on mobile devices if part of your audience is still 3G. What does that experience look like? So it's good to test it and it's great at scale to implement this at the server level if that can be possible. So definitely check these out in the way of improving mobile means improving speed. Google has this three letter acronym called accelerated mobile pages. So strip down HTML pages that load instantly. They didn't make this thing by accident. They did it because they see the world as going mobile and they see the need for speed. We as marketers like to say that our products are unique. We like to make sure that our web experiences are also a unique shopping experience. But in the process of doing that, we have robust websites that accomplish too much on a small screen and a mobile device. So this is a stripped down version that they're finding works. And the thing I want to call the light now is a large section of the Pepper Jam family, our audience here, you guys are retailers. You're focused on e-commerce. And the gate's now open for us to use AMP as well. So check out the documentation in this slide. AMP is no longer solely for sites like New York Times or BuzzFeed or just straight content anymore. 
It's also for us and it's ours for the taking. So tap into this technology if at all possible. And with any of these recommendations, it does not have to be all at once. Even if you take your top three flagship products pages and you make an AMP equivalent for them, I would say that's the solid test to do over Q4. So definitely send this to your developer as well. Next, this one feels really clumsy to say it here in 2017, but we still, we still, we still, we still see sites that swap out to an m.example.com domain that is responsive and then a homepage that's very separate for a desktop. The only thing I want to caution you there is as Google goes completely machine learning, basing all of its ranking factors off the mobile version, one of the things you got to think about for SEO purposes, your navigation of your primary domain, which is most likely www.whateveryourdomainis.com, your navigation is likely linking to www version of your site, whereas your m dot is linking to all the m dot pages. Well, if Google is basing everything off the mobile site, you're going to want one primary experience where all of your link equity is there for that primary domain. So one website, no link signal is going half to mobile M dot, no link signal is going to half for an experience that looks good on a tablet and desktop to www. That is just one aggregated website that houses all of your equity. So if it's not on the calendar and you have an M dot site, please check out this article at search land, search engine land. John Mueller of Google gives a tip that when they do go mobile first, you're gonna wanna have just one domain. So this is something you're gonna wanna read through. So we spoke about mobile. Some of the things changing, I gave you those tips on being fast, rip roaring fast. Let's talk about machine learning for a second because machines that are learning, that's kind of a scary topic, but we could use it to our advantage. So before I said use Google Analytics and those intelligent alerts, definitely do that. Log into your Google Analytics, upper right corner, Find any blind spots that you might never have considered, but the machines know about. I have something for you when it comes to machine learning and SEO and search. There is a Google Quality Rater Guideline document. It's a Google search away, but I link to it right here. You can see this PDF link. This takes you right here. It is a gigantic document. Last time I looked at this, it was, I think, 80, 90 pages. Now it's over 200. But it looks like this. And what you're staring at is a screenshot from a guide that was designed to train an employee at Google with the job title, Quality Rater. So someone, team of many, but someone had to read through this guide and understand the definition of what Google believes is a quality result. And with that knowledge, they would take a test and they would pass. And at that point, they would become one of Google's official quality raters. And with this criteria they're giving them in the guide, they decide exactly what is quality. Now, as we think about Google going the way of artificial intelligence and the way of machine learning, it's not a far stretch to say, if Google has a manual team that is determining quality on a site-by-site-by-site -by -site -by -site basis, that that is the exact same criteria that train this machine learning algorithm. So I'm not gonna say read this thing from front to back, but what I will say is skim through it, hit the high notes, look in the, in the index and find the type of site that is closest to you and your audience, your website, and just read through what it would take to get a fully, 
yeah, I believe highest quality fully on the right side here. Quality score for Google's algorithm. The one tip I will give you is as I read the latest version of this, the thing that jumps out the most is now that Google's machine learning and the algorithms are able to pivot based on what someone searches, there's an emphasis on the searcher's intent. So what I mean by that is you're going to have to focus in 2017, 18, and beyond when it comes to your websites. Focus on the outcome that you want your visitors to take on a page-by-page -page basis, whether that outcome is to click a button and wind up further in the buying process or that outcome is to click a form. Focus on that optimize for that intent someone is coming on my website to buy something then focus on those keywords of shopping if it isn't if it's to get information answer the what how when here where and why and focus on the intent of someone searching to land on your page because that is the level that google is playing at when it comes to quality so the takeaway here focus on the outcome for every page, and you'll be getting closer to quality. Next, one of the latest algorithms, the Google team sort of joked about what to name it. In the search world, people like me are always looking at Search Engine Land, we're looking at Google Webmaster official blog, we're looking at Twitter to find out when our colleagues say there's been an algorithm shift, they're noticing that their top rankings just fell off a cliff. Hey, Google, what happened? Well, Google doesn't comment much anymore about what happens because they change their algorithms so often. A few months ago, Gary Ilyas, he is a webmaster trends analyst. So he's one of the last uh, Google public representatives that still gives some info. And he really does his best to be helpful. And he did drop a hint that is going to help our Pepper Jam family here that's on the line today. And it's this. This new algorithm, a quality algorithm they pushed, they joked and they started to call it Fred. So rather than penguin or panda or pigeon, giving it the typical animal name that you would hear in search marketing, instead they just called it Fred. <laughs> they didn't really have a name for it. But he did say this. He said that in Google's bulleted webmaster guidelines, so much shorter guide than the guide on the previous screen, he said that the quality guidelines of what this latest algorithm was really filtering out, that it was all written in there. You want to have websites that follow those specific guidelines. And you'll see on the slide here, I drew a green square around the one that it really is coming to light as we are in this machine learning age. And it's, the underlying message is this. If you have a website that is just a shallow container of affiliate links, going forward, you are not going to win at all. Google, these browsers, all of these updates are with the end user in mind. And what they say is you need to provide sufficient value on your page. So the days of trying to recreate Retail Me Not or a page that doesn't have anything than expired coupon codes and maybe one all the way at the bottom of the page that might still work, if that's all the value that you're trying to provide, you aren't going to win in Google's eyes. You aren't going to win in Google Chrome or iOS with some of these updates of cookieing. So going forward, the machine learning age, algorithms, browsers, anything that's machine learning is designed to promote the best of the best for the end user. And I don't bring this up with a highlighted topic here to scare you. I bring it up because we're coming out of an age where you can sneak by or game the system or fake it. You can't anymore. Machines at scale are designed to promote the best 
user experience designed to give you the best answer, to find you the best price. So in the world of search, that means having pages that provide value. Which brings us to the next category. There are some browser changes that are top of mind. The one I'm going to talk about here mostly is in the lens of Google, machine learning, and Chrome. So there's an emphasis on security. Here's what is going on with this new ad filter that's going live. So Chrome's new ad filter is also going to use machine learning. So as Google safe browsing is following along anytime you use Chrome, it knows when users get a bad experience. It sees that data, whether that's through clicks, bookmarks, they don't comment there but they do have the data to quickly understand what is a poor experience. And the new version of Chrome and this ad filter is going to put that to use. So here's what they have for us. They are using this organization, betterads.org, Coalition for Better Ad Standards. The neat thing about this screenshot is this is specifically what this ad filter is looking for. So I won't read all of them, but as you glance at this screenshot, things like pop-up ads, videos with sound that pop up on their own, large sticky ads that have no value. On mobile devices, it looks like they're most concerned with throwing ads up that your audience can't avoid. They can't click, they can't close it. They can't see your content without trying to force their way through a back button or close your ad, they're, they're saying, guys, enough. Stop doing this to your audience. Your audience is pulling their hair out. You, when you go to your competitor's website, when you go to websites you actually like and see ads, you don't even like this, so stop doing this. That's what they're saying, and they're filtering that out to make the web a better ex user experience for your users. So, now we're all kind of wondering, is my site safe? Is my the buying process that I've set up on my website safe? Are my ads that I you know really like having, whether that's email opt-in or a coupon code, is that going to fly? Well, Google built a tool that's part of Webmaster Tools, but a little outside of that side navigation. It looks like this. And what they do is they test your site and they tell you if you pass or fail based on the screen before it, these pictures and its criteria. But it says if you pass or fail. And if you fail, it'll give you reasons why and then a chance to resubmit your site until you pass. So there is a testing tool and there are optics to see if you will pass this test. So when you download these slides, check out this URL. If you have your site verified in Webmaster Tools, which is a large part of our audience today. And if not, it's free. Verify your site. You'll get optics into this too. It's a really, really good idea to at least take a look at this, see where you pass, see where you fail. Any shortcoming, especially going into Q4, is only going to help your buyer. Next, HTTPS. So that new version of Chrome not provided messages, that is not going to build trust with your buyers. So this is the way forward. I saw a stat saying 90% of search results, top rankings, they're all HTTPS. I don't believe it itself is a ranking factor, but I do believe the sites that you're up against take security seriously. So we should too. And if you've never looked into it, Let's Encrypt is a completely free SSL certificate. So what they're trying to do is provide a free solution that does allow for security. So put it on your roadmap, consider going HTTPS and make that happen. Next, this next section's my favorite. And I'm pretty confident that it's the last section we'll go over. So in the beginning, we spoke about for broad queries, product listing ads come up a new broader type than that called a showcase shopping ad. 
and Google is really building in visuals with structured data, bringing in product pictures and stars, and really trying to make the SERPs more visual friendly. But they're also doing this for Google Images. And the best tip you could do is tap into these labels that are new for Google Image. So it'll say that you have a product. This is the picture of that product. Or it'll say that it's a video. It's 10 minutes, 42 seconds long. Just like I've circled here in purple. This is a screenshot for, I was searching LCD TV. And this is what it would look like. So a real visual search. I didn't know exactly what I wanted, but you know, I want a TV that looks like, mm, it's easier to see it than look at text and determine what I want. So Google Images bring in these labels. Now here's how you could capture these labels. You have to tell the search engine exactly what is on your page. And the logic to do that is through structured data. So you might have heard of schema.org. It's a markup language that allows search engines, Google, Bing, Yahoo, they all approved it to say, hey, this is my product landing page. Here's the product's title. This part of the source code down here is the product's price. This part over here is the product's image. This part of my source code on line 75, this is what my audience rates this product. It got four out of five stars. And this is my brand name. And the fact that you're more or less packaging that up for a search engine to say, hey, my source code is going to look different than my competitors, but here's the product's name, here's its description, picture. The fact that you're calling that out makes Google being in Yahoo's job much, much easier to determine that your landing page with code on it is for a thing, for a product, and it tells them exactly which product. So tap into this. Each of these three links, depending on what type of entities, what things your web page contains, whether that's videos or products or recipes, tap into these three and you could get some more organic traffic in the way of visual organic traffic from Google Image. So I also wanted to offer up some traditional SEO tips for image. I learned something recently I didn't know. You could, I knew that you could create a, an image sitemap. So a sitemap XML file specifically is a file you can write and give to a search engine that says, hey, here are the pages on my website that I want you to get to. The neat part about an image sitemap is you could say, hey, on this page that I want you to go to, I really want you to take notice of this particular image right here. Now, something that I didn't know you could do is you could also put alt text. So pairing up optimized text with images, I think you should do that all day long in your source code, but you could also do that in a sitemap. There's a field called image caption. So in your sitemap, go to this page, on this page, you'll find this image. Oh, this image, here's an optimized caption for that image. That is a quick way, a quick win before Q4. You could get a lot of images indexed in an optimized way. So with some notepad and development love, you can make an image sitemap with alt text built directly into it. It's something I would certainly consider. The other thing I want to call out is this site that I linked to up here at the top, compressor.io. Whether you like tiny PNG or you have another image compression site in mind, it really doesn't matter. The end goal here is as the world goes mobile and you got to keep your web pages quick, when it comes to imagery, images do look sharp for the web when they're retina display two times as large but not every device can even read retina display especially some mobile devices might be a little older something you should do is compress your images for their file size not to degrade how crystal clear they look or how vibrant but to compress the size 
I looked at a website the other day that is part of our Pepper Jam family. We reached out to them. They have a homepage that's got 13 megabytes of images. Can you imagine going into Q4 with 13 megs of images? So if you're changing up your landing pages, uploading a lot of images to your site, one of the best things you could do is before you push those live to production, pop into Compressor.io, drag your images, get the final compressed version, spot check it, see if it looks good to you. If it looks good to your naked eye, it's going to look good to your buyer. Put that version on your website instead. You can make your landing pages much quicker to download. Next, we spoke about those showcase shopping product listing ads. So on the slide, you see PLA, product listing ad, PLA. Those now display four broad brand name queries. I'm not even talking about branded like Nature Made Multivitamin or Calvin Klein underwear. I'm talking Nature Made itself, so brand names. The trade off here is that organic on mobile devices is going to be pushed below the fold if you're doing te text ads. That you really should consider tapping into these ads. It's another place in Google you could get visual real estate. Now, Pepper Jam did a study in our lab. And the large takeaway I want to call the light is that in our lab, we learned people don't even notice those are ads. They're visual. They jump out. They look just like Google's image carousel that they never even noticed. It said sponsored at the top. They saw the image and they were not perceived as ads. So consider PLAs, product listing ads, consider showcase ads if you haven't already and definitely read through our study. So I link to it right here in the slide. That is all my Pepper Jam friends and family. So it looks like we have some questions. Uh, bear with me one or two moments. I'm gonna see what our friends here wrote us in the way of questions. And while it's up on the screen, jot down this URL to download the slides. You can get a copy for yourself. It's PJ Colossal. And for you guys that made it this far, thank you. There are still 32 people on the line that have stuck with me. You guys are incredible. Thank you for listening to my rants. I want to be able to answer your questions. Okay, so first question from Justin T. We spoke about Chrome ad blockers. Do I have any insight into iOS 11 intelligent tracking protection limitations and tracking pixels having 24 hour window? So in the slide deck, I was particularly talking about Chrome, but it is a great call out. When it comes to iOS, so Safari, Safari is also a major browser. I didn't get into it in this deck, but it's a great question. So Apple is making a change. They are using machine learning to filter on the other end rather than ads themselves, tracking of the users of their browser. And it said that for third-party cookies, they're giving those 24-hour cookie window. Now, we'll say here at Pepper Jam, it has not been an issue for our Pixel to our knowledge yet. But the team is working on a solution to make very certain that everybody on our network is still getting the value that they need. But I will say based on this question and based on the topics here today, you know, as the web goes, machine learning, the inherent meaning here is to really focus on your user and not so much the ad itself, not so much the cookie window, but their experience. And if 
Chrome, Google, iOS, Apple, if they're focused on security for their users, their heads are in the right place. And yours really should be too. I understand we're trying to sell things, but this is all about creating an experience that's good for your users. So what I, would, what I really will say is focus on the user experience. Focus on providing sufficient value, and then you won't have to worry about a 24-hour cookie window because if you're providing value, your audience will come back. They will share you. They will promote you. And then the cookie duration is a moot point. All right. I do have another question here. This is a good question. So Stacy Smallwood asked the question, do live chat small windows count as an ad that will be filtered out? Stacy, I got to be honest, I do not know. But I will, I will say, download the slides so it's in the lower right corner of the screen you're staring at. Download these slides and on the slide, uh, second to last section here, I give you a URL with a webmaster in it to test if your landing page counts. If it's a live chat and they and your audience can close it, I will say no. Something I didn't even speak about here in the webinar was by 2020, it said that chatbots, so automation of customer service is going to be insanely popular. And heads at Google, even Gary Ilyish, who I mentioned earlier, one of the things he said for digital marketers to keep in their roadmap is how, think about how you can use chatbots. So if you're using some sort of live chat, I can tell you Google does promote customer service, promote chat, that I highly doubt they're gonna filter it out. If it's there to be helpful, it's golden. If it's there to block users from seeing your content, that's an I'd worry. If you have any question at all, please put it in the question box. It looks like there are a couple comments. Guys enjoyed the content, but in the way of questions, there are really not many. Uh, we'll hang out on the line. We'll give you a couple minutes. If you don't have any questions, uh, someone just asked a good question. Stacy again, how could a chatbot actually understand to answer? Stacy, my understanding is this. So as we think about machine learning, so machines that are powerful enough to look at large data sets and tap into other technologies like language to answer. So what they're doing essentially is you're giving them a list of here's every possible thing I could type up in the way of customer service question and answer form. And machine learning and language interpretations at a point where even getting close to the exact question you type is good enough to give an answer that it becomes automated. So what will happen is you'll log into a chat window. Like let's say Verizon, for example, you want to talk about your Verizon bill and Verizon's using chatbot technology. So someone will pop in and it'll sound conversational, sound like, hey, my name's Steve. Little do you know, it's automated. And you go, hi, my name's Steve. How may I help you today? And you'll type your question in and you'll ask a question that in a database you've provided, you're going to get close to answering it. Well, this chatbot technology will understand that even though some words aren't exact, close is good enough, they feel confident that, you know, answer number 35 is the one that they should give them. Technology is at a point where it can do things like this, and it's so conversational that we users of this technology, we don't even notice that it's, it's not a human being on the other end. So that is already, that's already a reality. So if it's possible that you get to tap into that technology, it's something to consider.
If you guys have any questions at all, please type them in. I'll do my best to answer. But once again, thank you so very much for hanging out with us today to talk about these colossal changes in digital marketing. going to give it a couple more minutes. Some of you are still hanging out on the line. If you're hanging out because you'd like a question of your own answered, type it in. We will get to it. And if you have no questions, it's been great, guys. Oh, I got some thank yous. Downloaded your presentation. Mike, you are fantastic. Thank you for hanging out with us today. If you have any question at all, please tweet at us, email me, I'd be glad to answer it. But thank you. Megan, you are so welcome. Thank you for joining. Please come to the next one. I like doing these. You guys could tell I'm caffeinated. We kind of riff for an hour, answer questions. It's fun for me. Please join us next time. All right, ladies and gentlemen, I am going to end the webinar. You've been a fantastic audience. I had fun. Pepper Jam family, we are done. Signing out. I'm Steve. <laughs>